All right, and welcome back. This is going to be the first video of the Wing Kit series. Yes, it finally arrived. Um, the FedEx truck is just arriving as I'm uh, walking in now, and they've got two boxes for me. And this is a a pretty neat uh, point. Um, it was an eight week. Uh, I want to say actually it might have been just seven weeks, but right around seven or eight weeks from the time that I ordered the kit to when it finally arrived. And I had hoped to have the empennage kit completed, um, and I was almost there. I got most of the way done, but uh, not quite. So there's a, little, uh, a few things to finish, but uh, until then, I've now got a wing kit to work on. So got everything here and uh, about to talk to it here. All right, as you can see, the wing kit has arrived. Uh, the box was pretty damaged. Um, the main skins box was uh, separated at one end on both the top and the bottom uh, panels. Opened it real quick and didn't see any obvious damage, uh, but obviously got to go through all the parts and uh, verify that there's no damage to the pieces inside. Um, so we'll go through and pull everything out and inventory everything and take the next day or so to go through all the parts. The main skins and all the, the uh, 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 ribs and everything in this box here and then the long box that's behind this panel here is the uh, spars. Again, we'll take a look and see what we find. So on to the inventory. So as you saw, the delivery sometimes is good, sometimes not so good. When I got the empennage kit, it had a few holes in the sides of the, the boxing, uh, the packaging. But uh, this one was considerably worse. The Like I said, the, the top panel and the bottom panel on the main wings box were, were completely separated at the far end there. And uh, you could see some of the skins kind of sticking out. So I was worried that some of the skins would have been damaged just from the edge being in a, you know, basically in a pinch point. But I was fortunate there was no significant damage for anything throughout the box. Uh, in all the inspections, everything was good. Um, so I was real fortunate with that. I was, I was happy. And, and uh, things are going to happen during shipping. It's, it's unfortunate, but it's an unfortunate reality. So... It is what it is. You just kind of move with it and uh, hope for the best. So anyway, the rest of this video is going to be uh, bits and pieces of inventory. I didn't include all of the video from the inventory because that was a lot. Uh, it took a while to go through all of the parts and pieces of this kit. Um, obviously, there's two boxes. Um, there's there's a lot of small parts. There's a lot of lo uh, large parts. And there are a lot of parts tucked into other parts so there's a lot of separation a lot of inspections and it's just a lot of stuff especially when you get to the hardware bag it is a huge hardware bag and amazingly enough with everything said and done there actually wasn't that much that was missing so anyway so the the fun part is getting to meet others in in this process in fact uh, recently met a gentleman by the name of Kevin, who is also building an RV-14. Um, he is close by at a nearby airport, and uh, he has purchased his kit uh, shortly after I did. Um, I got mine in the beginning of November of 2017, and uh, I believe he said that he got his uh, closer to the end of November, if I recall correctly. But uh, he and I are essentially at the same same point in the build. Uh, just finishing up on the empennage kit. Uh, I believe he stated that he was getting the quick build wings and fuselage, and I think that they were actually supposed to arrive here pretty soon. So that'll be fun to follow with him and see how his progress goes and uh, kind of follow along and, and see where he goes with his build. But the uh, the, the community is, is pretty pretty cool. I enjoy it. Uh, they, you know, going on to Vans Air, uh, Vans Air Force, Dot net and going onto the forums there and, and getting ideas or uh, finding answers to questions that you have. It's a very close-knit community and uh, very willing to help uh, 
with anything you have. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of experience with uh, building uh, fuel tanks, obviously. And I've talked about in the last video that I would I was thinking about not uh, building my my fuel tanks. In fact, uh, I had been talking about uh, getting those outsourced. But after talking to several folks on the forums and and watching some YouTube videos, uh, especially watching uh, Mr. Jason Ellis as he's building his RV10. If you haven't seen his YouTube videos. I would recommend looking him up and t uh, taking a look at his videos. They're, they are outstanding videos. Um, but I have a feeling, or I, I think that I am going to build my, my own fuel tanks. In fact, I've started uh, deburring the ribs and whatnot, and I, I think I'm going to go ahead and go go ahead and do it. So we'll film the process. We'll see how it goes. I figure the worst can happen is I just have to buy new parts to build fuel tanks, and then I'll outsource them. Um, but until then, we'll see how the rest of this, this build goes. So this is the hardware kit that I referenced before, and that is a giant bag that was a, just full of, of pieces and parts and little bits. And you have to go through everything. Uh, with the exception of the rivets, um, they pretty much tell you just, just accept the fact that the rivets are rivets and you're going to have a whole bunch of them and more than likely you'll have more than enough. But everything else, the nut plates, the screws, all the hardware, um, all the plastic pieces, they want you to count every single bit of it. And like I said, with the number of stuff that's in this kit, I was amazed that there was only a couple hardware pieces that were missing. Um, everything else was there, all the skins, all the ribs, all the little pieces, everything else was there and very impressive, very, very... Uh, like I said, very impressed with how Vans puts these kits together. And so, anyway, other news. Uh, my Piper is still, unfortunately, down for the count. Um, as I discussed previously, my last return trip home from Oregon, uh, five miles out from my home field, I essentially disintegrated the exhaust valve in uh, the number two cylinder. And so I have to replace that entire cylinder and piston head. And it's going to be about a $2,000 job. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to it. And so it's sitting at the airfield. And uh, I'm sad about it, but, you know, such is life. So we'll hopefully get that thing up and going fairly soon. It's starting to be hot, so I don't know how much flying I will actually do anyway. I'm uh, thinking about taking the, pr the, the prop off and repitching it to get a better cruise speed out of the uh, Piper Cherokee. But So with that, on to the results of the inventory, and we'll talk to that right here. All right, so completed the inventory check of the wing kit for the RV-14. As you can see, it's a pretty long and extensive parts list. I'm pretty impressed in that there's only about four or five pieces of hardware that are missing. Everything else is here. Um, as you can see from the carnage behind me, there's quite a bit of stuff to go through. As they talk about, make sure you're always going through all the bits of packing material, all the, uh, the wrapping that you see piled up in the back here, just to make sure you don't accidentally throw something away, as they talk about. Um, like I said, there's only a couple uh, pieces of hardware that are missing, uh, a couple bolts, a couple rivets, things like that. Uh, everything else is, is in place and in order. I've stacked everything on to my shelves, and uh, next step is going to be starting to figure out where I want to start. The first chapter, in, uh, section 13, has you work on the main spars and I may or may not do that. I might start with the ailerons or the flaps or some of the smaller uh, uh, control surfaces, just kind of get into the, the small parts first. Um, the spars obviously being very expensive piece, so I kind of want to look at that a little bit more, but we'll see. I've got plenty of time. It's starting to warm up here uh, in Phoenix. It's been about 105 for the last couple weeks, and it's only going to get hotter. I'm going to have to invest in some kind of portable AC unit or something uh, to put out here in the garage because it's just hot. Uh, right now it's about 2 o'clock in the morning, so it's bearable. But it's uh, going to soon get to the point where even at 2 o'clock in the morning, it's hot. So 
we'll look into that and uh, try to make it so that I can at least bear working out here in the summer. So anyway, uh, that was just a quick update. I'm, uh, like I said, going to be looking into what section I'm going to start with. And uh, I'm expecting this section to probably take the better part of a year. Uh, this is uh, May 10th, May 11th. Um, so I figure late spring next year, I will probably be done with the wings. I'm going to have someone build my fuel, uh, fuel tanks for me. I'm not going to get into those. Um, everyone I talk to, it's, it's an experience, but uh, everyone highly recommends getting that done for you. And that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. So that'll take off some time. Uh, getting everything together but everything else I'm gonna work on and I'm gonna put together myself so we'll see it uh, it took me about uh, about four months four or five months to put the uh, empanage kit together and I, I have a feeling that the wing kit is gonna take a little bit longer from everything that I've seen on the forums and uh, talking with other folks so anyway that's a quick update again I appreciate those that continue to follow along and we'll see you next time